to DC today, uh, Thursday, June 29th, almost uh, about a day away through halfway point on the year. Uh, nice day in markets today. The Dow is up almost 270 points. Um, S&P was up about half a percent, a little less. NASDAQ was flat on the day. Um, we got a couple of good data points out um, today that kind of fueled the rally, which was nice to see. GDP for Q1 was revised up from 1.3 to 2 percent, so pretty big upward revision. A lot of that was, um, or the biggest uh, contributor was consumer spending, which was uh, something like 4.2 percent inside of that number, um, which is which is great to see. The um, the one thing I'll say to that, uh, to take it sort of with a grain of salt. It's just that we also had about an eight and a half or eight point seven percent increase in Social Security, COLA, uh, cost of adjustment, uh, living adjustment um, amount from the government in there too. So that could have been what you you know kind of what fueled some of that consumer spending, but exports actually were up um, something like uh, we're up nicely inside of that number too, something like eight percent, a little less than eight percent in there too. So I think that was the the better part of that number. But any upward revision of GDP is always welcome. Uh, so, so you had that as good news. There was um, a completed <clears throat> Dodd-Frank stress test that the Fed concluded today, which showed all 23 banks passing. Um, and pretty meaningful stress test. Um, it equated to something like uh, a big recession globally, um, ten, uh, unemployment rising up to 10%, um, and um, equated to something like a $541 billion loss inside of the banking system. They were able to withstand that. It in, uh, uh, included a 40% um, a drawdown in commercial real estate values, and as which is a topic du jour lately after Silicon Valley Bank failure, failure with, you know, what if commercial prices go down, all those lenders are going to struggle, um, you know, with not getting repaid on their loans and things. So, so pretty decent stress test and, and good results uh, on the day. The... Um, uh, labor market continues to show strength. The jobless numbers that came out today were better than expected. It was a 239,000 print versus uh, 265 expectations. Um, so a lot less of those, you know, filing for initial jobless claims, unemployment, uh, which is good. The uh, continuing claims also beat. So, you know, again, those three pieces of data on the day were, were pretty positive. There's not a lot of holes I could poke through them. And it's kind of nice to see markets actually go up or at least part of the market went up on the news. Um, so good news being good news. In other words, instead of good news being a fear that the Fed will raise rates more than others predict. Um, so I'll take that too. Um, there was uh, uh, pending home sales on the day were lower than expected. We expect sort of a flat number and they came out negative 2.7, um, you know, on the week, which I don't know what else is to be expected. I mean, there's really not a lot of inventory for sale. We're at about half the inventory that we had before the pandemic, just because mortgage rates are high and people have either moved or are set to stay where they are. But other than new home sales, there's just not a lot of inventory on existing home sales. And so obviously the, the, the sales volume is lower. Um, there was uh, some additional comments out on from the Fed today. Um, also in Europe, uh, there was a Bank of Spain event where Powell spoke a little bit. He just kind of walked back some of the language he had yesterday which is, which is to say that he's not predicting there'll be two consecutive rate hikes. He just said that it's on the table and that um, um, whatever he needs to do to get inflation back to 2% is what his goal is. But as he said yesterday, he's not expecting that until 2025. And also the dot plots, meaning their estimate of where rates are going to go, isn't much higher than where they already are. So to me, that just says that they've they've accomplished what they want to accomplish and they're going to let this thing play out a bit. So whether they leave rates where they are, whether they raise rates another 25 or 50 basis points, pretty immaterial in my opinion. Um, the um, uh, value stocks outperformed today. Rates went up. The 10-year was up like, I think it was 13 basis points on the day. Um, Two-year was also up about the same. So you can sort of see a flattening on the yield curve a little bit um, with, uh, with some hotter economic numbers, which is to be expected. Um, but with that, you saw shorter duration stocks, so value stocks, dividend stocks, those types of things outperformed pretty significantly today. Again, the Dow was up 0.8%, uh, and the NASDAQ was, was a zero. Uh, gives you a difference between sort of value and growth. But all that to say, i um, encouraged by the news today. You know, it's, it's all expansionary. It's all showing a pretty resilient economy, even in the face of rates that have gone up 500 basis points. So I think it's, it's still kind of further, further good news. Uh, 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 to speak today. 
Um, with that, I'll let you go for the for the night. We've got some inflation data out tomorrow on the PC on core PCE, which I think we'll be telling. Um, and then we'll have Dividend Cafe in your inbox as always. Of course, we've got the weekend and then probably a pretty slow week is my guess, at least the first half next week as we head into the 4th of July uh, holiday. So if I don't speak to you, have a great 4th. Uh, reach out with questions and we'll talk soon.